So not to sort of bring up the idea of a creator, but I, I like, first of all, I like video games. And you mentioned this kind of simulation idea. First of all, do you think of it as an interesting idea, this thought experiment that we live in a simulation? And in general, do you think we live in a simulation? So the, the Nick Bostrom's idea about the, the simulation is typically couched in a physicalist framework. Yes. So there's the bottom level. There's some programmer in a physical space-time, and they have a computer that they've programmed really in cleverly where they've created conscious entities. So you have the hard problem of consciousness, right? The standard hard problem. How could a com computer simulation create a consciousness? Which isn't explained by that simulation theory. But then the idea is that the next level, the the entities that are from the that are created in the first level simulation, then can write their own simulations and you get this this nesting. So so the idea that um, this is a simulation is fine. But the idea that this starts with a physicalist base, I think, isn't fine. Well, there's there's different properties here. The the partial rendering. I mean, to me that's the interesting idea is not whether the entirety of the universe is simulated, but how efficiently can you um, create interfaces that are convincing to all other entities that can appreciate such interfaces? How little does it take? Because you said like partial rendering or like temporal, ephemeral rendering of stuff only render the tree falling in the forest when uh, there's somebody there to see it. It's interesting to think, how can you do that super efficiently without having to render everything? And that to me is one perspective on the simulation, just like it is with video games, right, right? where a video game doesn't have to render every single thing. It's just the thing that the observer is looking at. Right. There is actually, that's a, a very nice question. And there's whole groups of researchers that are actually studying in, in virtual reality what what is the sort of minimal requirements on this system? What, how does it have to operate to give you an immersion experience, to give you the feeling that you have a body, to, to get you to take it real? And, and there's actually a lot of really good work on that right now. And it, it turns out it doesn't take that much. You do need to get the perception action loop tight, and, and it, you have to give them the perceptions that they're expecting if you want them to. But if you you, you can lead them along. If you give them perceptions that are close to what they're expecting, you can then maybe move their reality around a bit. Yeah, it's a tricky engineering problem, especially when you're trying to create a product that costs little, but that's I, it feels like an engineering problem, not a deeply scientific problem. Um, or meaning, obviously, it's a scientific problem, but as a scientific problem, it's not that difficult to trick us uh, descendants of apes. But here's, here's a, a case for just us in our own, if this is a virtual reality that we're experiencing yes. right now. So, Here's something you can try for yourself. If you just close your eyes and look at your experience in front of you, be aware of your experience in front of you, what you experience is just like a mottled dark gray. But there's all sort of, there's some dynamics to it, but it's just dark gray. But now I ask you, instead of having your attention forward, put your atten attention backward. What is it like behind you with your eyes closed? Hmm. And there, it's like nothing. It's real. So what is going on here? What, what am I experiencing back there? <laughs> right? Well, it's, it's, I, I don't know if it's nothing. It's, it's like, I guess it's the absence of, it's not even like darkness or something. It's, uh, it, it, it's not even darkness. It's, it, it's, it, there's, no, there's no qualia to yeah. it. And yet there is a sense of being. And that's the interesting thing. Yeah. There's a sense of being back. So I close my, you know, I put my attention forward, I, just, I have the quality of a gray model thing. But when I put my attention backward, there's no quality at all, but there is a sense of being. Yeah. I, I personally, uh, now you haven't been to that side of the room. I have been to that side of the room. So for me, memories, I start, um, I start uh, playing the engine of memory replay which is like I, I take myself back in time and think about that place where I was hanging out in that part. That's what I see when I'm behind. So it's, that's an interesting quirk of hum, humans too. We're able to, we're collecting these experiences and we can replay them in interesting ways whenever we feel like it. And it's almost like being there, but not really, but almost. That, that, that's right. 
And, and yet we can go our entire lives in this. this is, you're talking about the minimal thing for VR. We can go our entire lives and not realize that all of my life, it's been like nothing behind me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We, we, we're not even aware that all of our lives, if you just just for the just pay attention, close your eyes, pay attention to what's behind me, we're like, oh, holy smoke. It's totally scary. I mean, it's like nothing. There's no yeah. quality there at all. How did I not notice that my entire life? We're so immersed in the simulation, we buy it so much. Yeah. I mean, uh, you could see this with, with children, right? Though With persistence, you know, you could do the peekaboo game. You can hide from them and, and appear and they're fully tricked. And in the same way, we're fully tricked. There's nothing behind us and we assume there is. And that's really interesting.